Hi everybody, uh, this is your notes uh, for bacteria. Uh, so please go ahead and get out your orange notes packet, right? Uh, we are doing page, there it is, page one of the packet. I know that we started midway through, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and pick up on page one. So let's get started with your notes for bacteria. All right, so of course, uh, you know in every unit, I'm gonna show you the hierarchy of biology, right? So make sure in your notes in the center column, you circle uh, that we're gonna be focusing on the living and the non-living uh, in this unit. We talked about uh, viruses, those are non-living, and we went through that last class. Uh, and today we are gonna be talking about some living things. So this is a throwback. Uh, we're on, again, page one of your notes, and you'll need to fill out this table. So remember, pro rhymes with no. Prokaryotes have no nucleus. Uh, the root pro uh, actually means before. So prokaryotic cells or cells with no nuclei, they, you know, evolved first. Remember, they're very simple. Uh, their DNA just floats around. And remember, their DNA forms those circles called plasmids. They don't have a lot of uh, organelles. Uh, you can see that they're very small. And we're going to be focusing on bacteria. That's where we will be uh, focusing our energy. So let's quickly review eukaryotes. Remember, eukaryotes do have a nucleus. Uh, those are cells like ours. You do have a nucleus, or your cells do. Uh, they're complex. Uh, there's tons of DNA in there, right? Organelles, and their organelles are fancy. They've got membranes around them. Uh, they're larger, and you know we've got plants and animals. We've spent a lot of time talking about those different types of cells. All right, here we go. We've got a quick check. Uh, so on page one of your notes in the far right-hand column, I want you to go ahead and draw this Venn diagram and fill it out, all right? Compare and contrast prokaryotes and eukaryotes. All right, so now let's talk about uh, being organized. Uh, so I'm not going to call anybody out, uh, but I'm sure that some of us have... Uh, clothes that look like this unorganized dresser. You can see there's kind of everywhere. It's kind of hard to find things. Uh, and then I'm sure some of us uh, have a dresser that looks like the one here on the top right. Uh, they maybe they've got a space for their shirts, for their, uh, you know, their underwear, their socks. It's all very organized. And so we're talking about organizing bacteria. Uh, so we're going to be focusing specifically on bacteria, but I want to make sure that you understand that uh, the science or the discipline of classification is organizing. So if you like organizing, uh, maybe this will be a field for you. Uh, it's a systematic way of naming and organizing things uh, to show how they are related to each other. Um, it really relies on careful observations of specific patterns and being able to compare and contrast specific traits. So let's talk about the classification of bacteria. So bacteria are organized um, by how they get energy right, how they do metabolism. And so they are living things. Remember, that's one of the criteria of living things, metabolism. And so we've got three different classification groups or categories. So heterotrophs, they have to eat other things to get energy. They can't make their own energy. They have to consume. Photoautotrophs, maybe that photo sounds familiar, reminds you of photosynthesis. Uh, well, these are bacteria that can do photosynthesis. Uh, so they produce their own energy uh, just like plants by capturing uh, light from the sun and combining it with some other reactants to get energy as a product. And then finally we've got chemoautotrophs. These guys produce their own energy kind of like you know the photoautotrophs um, but they don't do photosynthesis. Instead of they do chemosynthesis uh, where they take uh, you know, chemicals, that's where they get their uh, energy. They rearrange those chemicals uh, into uh, energy molecules for themselves. So we've got three different examples. So one uh, type of heterotroph would be E. coli. You might have heard of E. coli a lot. Sometimes it makes people sick. Uh, you sometimes hear grocery store recalls, like lettuce recalled because of E. coli. So E. coli is a heterotroph. 
And we've got cyanobacteria, huge red flag that this is a photoautotroph is it's green, all right? It's going to have, you know, be doing photosynthesis. And then last but not least, uh, we've got some chemoautotrophs right here. These are nitrogen fixing bacteria. These guys uh, take nitrogen and rearrange uh, the uh, other atoms that are with the nitrogen uh, and, you know, are able to create energy molecules. All right, it's time for a quick check. So uh, this picture here, I've got a picture of a hydrothermal vent. Uh, these are down at the bottom of the ocean, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, them for our quick check. So in your notes, um, you know, in the column on page one, the empty column, you're going to classify the following as a heterotroph, photoautotroph, or a chemoautotroph. So here we go. A species of bacteria that lives deep at the bottom of the ocean near hydrothermal vents. So it looks like that. The bacteria uses hydrogen sulfide for metabolism. So is this heterotroph, photoautotroph, or chemoautotroph? So make sure you write that down in your notes. All right. So now we're going to get more into the different types of metabolism that bacteria use. So the first one is actually a review. Uh, we have studied cellular respiration. So, so two uh, throwbacks today, we talked about photosynthesis and now cellular respiration. So many bacteria do, you know, they have to do cellular respiration, just like us, um, where they convert food into energy, whether they consume that food or they make it, they still have to do cellular respiration. So in cellular respiration, oxygen is required. Uh, we need to have oxygen. And remember, uh, this type of metabolism or this chemical reaction makes lots of ATP. So in the center column of your notes, right, we're on page two now, um, make sure that you are filling out this diagram that, remember, in cellular respiration, glucose and oxygen are going to be going into uh, the cell. Here we've got streptococcus pneumoniae cell. Um, so this is a type of bacteria. It gives you strep throat, right? Um, and they're able to do this cellular respiration and make tons and tons of energy. And then remember the products in that reaction are carbon dioxide and water. So bacteria, though very tiny and small, uh, actually have a lot in common with us. Uh, we do the same reaction. All right. So next is fermentation. This is also maybe a throwback. You might remember that big squeeze lab that we did. Our muscles can also do fermentation. So some types of bacteria do fermentation uh, to get energy. Again, this is taking food, turning it into, an ener into energy. It's just a different chemical reaction because no oxygen is required. So in this chemical reaction here, we, you can see we've got a yeast cell. All right, so we are adding sugar, okay? Uh, fermentation is happening, this chemical reaction, and then we're not getting a ton of ATP out of it. We're also getting another uh, byproduct or a product that's coming out uh, of this chemical reaction, uh, but it, it just really doesn't make a lot of ATP. It's not as efficient. All right, so here we go, quick check time. We are in the, cent we're in the far column, the right side of your notes on page two. So here we've got a formula. You've seen this formula before. Is the following chemical reaction cellular respiration or fermentation and why? So look very carefully at those reactants. Look at your notes about, you know, what does cellular resp respiration versus fermentation and see if you can figure it out. All right, so now let's talk about reproduction. So bacteria are very versatile. Some can reproduce asexually and some can reproduce sexually and some can do both. So asexual uh, reproduction, this is a throwback, I think to the, maybe the second unit. So asexual reproduction, that is when it's making a genetic copy uh, of itself. The offspring are genetically identical. So, uh, one of the types of uh, asexual reproduction that bacteria do is binary fission. Binary fission, this is a mitosis, essentially. So you can see that right here, one cell uh, dividing into two. Another type is called budding. So budding is when we've got a bacteria cell, you can see here in the bottom left, uh, and kind of like a little mini piece of the cell pinches off and forms these little small buds. Uh, those buds uh, that can then break off and disperse or can even stay attached uh, to that parent bacteria. But the key thing to take away, whether it's binary fission or budding, this happens fast. They can reproduce very quickly. Asexual, do not need a partner, can just 
make tons and tons of bacteria cells. Next is sexual reproduction. Some bacteria do uh, sexual reproduction. Uh, and this is called in bacteria conjugation, conjugation. And this is where two bacteria make contact with each other uh, and then they transfer genetic material. This is relatively rare. Uh, it's not super common, but it can happen. Uh, where this, for example, plasmid, this red plasmid is given uh, to another bacteria. Okay, now let's talk about how uh, we as humans have, you know, tried to fight bacteria, especially the kind that can make us sick. So, um, you know, humans have developed uh, antibiotics to cure a bacterial disease uh, by killing the bacteria. Uh, not all bacteria are bad. Uh, our body has tons of bacteria in it. Uh, you can see here in our diagram in the bottom right, there's tons of bacteria in your body. In fact, your body has more bacteria cells in it than human cells. That's crazy. Uh, but, you know, there are some bad guys. Uh, there are some bad types of bacteria that can make you feel ill. And so how antibiotics work uh, is they target and disable specific parts of a bacteria cell. Um, maybe they target, um, you know, the cell wall. Uh, so, so building cell walls or cell wall synthesis. Um, maybe they target nucleic acid. So being able to copy your DNA. Uh, maybe they target protein synthesis, so the, the cell can't make proteins. Remember, the whole cell is made of proteins, so that's going to be a problem. Maybe they target metabolism uh, or, you know, being able to transfer specifically energy, doing that cellular respiration. So these antibiotics, you know, they target specific uh, parts of the cell that are necessary for these life processes. And so if the bacteria cell can't do the life process, well, it it can't survive, uh, and so it dies. So that's how antibiotics work. They're very specific, and they target parts uh, of or, or functions uh, within the bacteria. So remember these? Oh, yes. Oh, look, my face is even over my face. <laughs> All right. Um, so remember these five life processes, right? Uh, growth and repair, metabolism, reproduction, gas exchange, response to stimuli. I know they're here in yellow, um, but you don't need to copy them. Sorry about that. Uh, all bacteria do these, uh, and that's what makes them living things. Thanks so much for getting your notes done, and uh, go ahead and check on Canvas for the next uh, assignment at Gizmo. Bye, guys.